Hello and welcome to Granny Square Club for May, June, July of 2023. We're going to take three months to make this top. And if you've looked at this pattern, the Oh My Goodness top by, I can't believe she didn't put her name on the front. Wow, I'm going to have to look that up. She not put her name on the pattern? That's crazy. Let me look at the end. It is oh. the Oh Goodness top. It is available on Ravelry. And she didn't put her oh, name on the pattern. I'll have to look that up. Oh, it's by Little Golden Nook. That's what, she, that's what that's she, not her, right. her Ravelry page is, is Little Golden Nook. I can't remember her actual name. Um, so... It's a really cute crochet top. Um, but if you've looked at it, no matter what size, there's a lot of granny squares to make. So which is why we're going to take three months to do it, um, to give everybody plenty of time to do all the grannies. And so here's my, my breakdown of what we're going to do each month. So today we're going to cover um, just the pattern in general. We're going to talk about gauge and sizing a little bit, and we're going to go over square A and square B. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover today. This particular pattern has one, two, three, four, five types of granny squares. It's got um, two full square granny squares that she calls A and B, but they do look different. This is A, this is B, and then there are two half grannies which look different and then there is a three-quarter granny we're going to save the half and the three-quarter granny for next month and just focus on the there's ingrid and uh, just focus on square a square b and get engaged and talking about sizing a little bit um and of course in my eternal style i have changed the pattern just a little bit didn't really change it but i found a slightly what I think is maybe a little bit better way to do it. Um, but first I wanna just kind of look through the pattern with you. So things I love about this pattern, she has um, on the front page of the of your pattern, and I can't actually show it on camera because it's a paid, paid pattern and I don't wanna give it away to people. Um, she has a breakdown of sizes and how much yarn you need for each size. She has a schematic that shows the um, in measurements in centimeters for each size, which is great. I love a pattern with a schematic because it's so much easier to decide where what the best size for you is. She also, later in the pattern, towards the end, gives you some layouts so you can see how it's going to lay out and how to adapt it to make it the sleeves longer, the top longer, shorter, the sleeves a little skinnier. Because I don't need a big, I don't need to add anything to my sleeve. <laughs> it's, my sleeves are plenty big as they are. I might want a little bit narrower sleeve. So there's plenty of ways to adapt this, which I love. And she gives you two different kinds of necklines. So all of those things put together, I thought this was a great pattern to try for a granny square top. I've never made, let's see, there, there's there's text number one <laughs> from, from my oldest child. <laughs> Just love them. Um, younger one probably will be chiming in soon. Uh, okay, so those are the things that I loved about this pattern. And I figured it was it had lots of uh, lots of ways to adapt it as we as everybody needed to for different sizing. She talks about using a DK weight yarn, and I think everybody has yarn picked out. Michelle, you have yarn, right? What yarn are you using? I'm using the Coastal Cotton. Perfect. Okay. Good one. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, what we're I figured out the best way to do the gauge was actually to work through the first square with you and show and then I can show you the things that I figured out about the square and then we'll measure that actual square and, and then you'll be able to figure out your gauge. <clears throat> In her materials list, 
you may, you have seen that the main color, you need a lot of yardage. And that was surprising to me at first, but I figured out why. In these granny squares, typically the main color is just a, hold on, I'm back to zoom, there we go. Typically the main color is just a joining color or maybe a final round. In this particular pattern, on one of the squares so far, the main color is also the center of a square. So you're using that main color more than just the final rounds. You're actually using it as a center for the square, which is why you need so much more of your main color, okay? Um, that being said, you don't have to do it that way. I was looking through the projects that people had done and one that I came across, with, which was really cute, they chose just to do one square they didn't do square A, square B. They just picked one. It's actually a kind of a combination of both squares. And they made all of them small little centers. Um, Ingrid will say that <laughs> Ingrid will say that this looks like a pasty. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so each of their squares just had a, a two color center and then the rest of the main color, which gave it a whole different look. So uh, I think everybody has picked their colors, but if you're watching this recording and you haven't picked your yarn yet or aren't quite sure how you wanna lay it out, know that you can look through the projects and that you can see that this is another option to do. And once we start making the squares, I think that'll make more sense. Okay, let me get my notes. So I have lots of yourself on full screen. What's that? Could you do full screen for yourself? Am I on full screen? Yeah, no. Um, I thought I was, let me, let me try it again. I will pin my, um, how's that? Okay, good. All right. Thank you, Bernie. I appreciate it. Okay. In her notes on the first page, she talks about getting your gauge and we're going to make a square. And she also talks about if you don't quite get gauge, but you like the fabric that you've made, how you can adjust it a little bit for your sizing. So once we actually make a square, we'll come back to that. And then on the top of the second page, she's got, it says granny square patterns. And it says that the joining at the end of the rounds is done with a slip stitch. I did not change that. The next part says chain one at the end of the rounds does not count as a stitch. I actually changed that. We are actually going to count it as a stitch. And I'll show you why. Let me switch to my camera here. Um, hold on, there we go. And back to Zoom, hold on, share. Yes, okay. okay. The way that she, let me find one that I did. I did a bunch of squares ahead of time. Okay. All right, so what she had, what in the pattern that she has, and you are, are you can absolutely, this may not bother you. It bothered me, so I changed it. Zoom in. When she does a round, she tells you that you're going to slip stitch to join and then you're going to chain one loosely and then you're going to make your next stitch and then when you come back around you're going to skip that chain one loose one and slip stitch into the top of the first actual stitch but what happens is and this red this uh, orangey red one is a good example that orangey red round happened to be two double crochets chain one, two double crochets, chain one. But when you make, there we go. But when you make a slip stitch and a chain one, it still looks like a stitch. Okay, so it looks like I've got two double crochets, two double crochets, two, 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 two. This one looks like three to me. 
because it started with a slip stitch and a loose chain one, and then you make your two double crochets. And it just looked, it just it kept catching my eye. Let me find another one. Oh no, that one I did right. Oh, here's um, here's one. So here's where I joined the round. And that chain one and a slip stitch looks like a whole nother stitch. Everything else is two double crochet, two, 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 two. And then I come back to my beginning and it looks like three. So I kept seeing it and it kept bothering me. So I changed that. You can certainly do it the way she's done it. Just know that one of those little clusters, your beginning cluster of each round, is going to have that extra little thing that you're supposed to ignore. I found myself not able to ignore it. The morning group agreed because they're my test my test subjects for the recorded class. So all I did was change that instead of not counting it, we're going to count it. And I have what you're going to change on your pattern if you should choose to do that. So we're going to go, we're just going to start the square and you can mark up on your pattern as you want to. Um, if following along and writing is too much at the same time, I will email anybody who wants my, I know everybody bought the pattern. I'll, I'll email you my, uh, my changes, my written changes, so that you'll have a copy that has the written changes, if you should choose to do it that way. So I'm happy to do it if you'd rather just watch and, um, and, and, uh, and take it all in and then make notes later. Okay, so for my, top. Let me stop sharing for just a second. Um, I picked a main, one main color, this like dark gray, and then I picked six other colors to be my contrast colors. You can use as many contrast colors as you want to. I know Ingrid is going to do all of hers in one color and maybe just do um, like a, a slightly darker version for the last round because she wants it to be more monochromatic. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just know that when it says to change colors, you, do, you don't have to. You just have to do the rounds correctly. You can really use any color you want to. Um, but I decided on the six colors because that's what, that's what spoke to me. All right. So for, we're gonna go around square A first. And I'm gonna be making based on my gauge, which we'll talk about once we finish the square, I'm gonna be making the extra large size and I'll explain why. Um, my measurements told me that I probably should have made the large because it is a nice a roomy sweater or top, um, but my gauge was a little, a little off, but I liked the fabric, so I adjusted. Here's how we're gonna start. Just go back to my camera. All right, so I'm going to start with a contrast color. And she has you doing, let me zoom out. She has you starting with a um, slip knot and a chain four, and then you join in a ring, make those four chains into a ring. And then you work into that ring like this, which now you have this ring, this circle that you can make your stitches into. Um, if you've been to other Granny Square Club classes, you know I don't like to do that, but this is a totally valid way to do it, is to make your circle out of the four chains. I like to use a magic ring, and I do have a video of that, I believe on our first Granny Square Club on how to make the magic ring. And I like the magic ring because you can tighten the center of the magic ring, okay? All right. So instead of with contract cut color, form a slip knot, chain four, join to the first chain, and then chain one, I did a magic ring and then I'm chaining one. Okay, so you wanna have a circle to make your stitches into. 
pull out some yarns. I'm not tugging the whole time. Okay. And then you're going to make eight single crochets into this ring. Now, as I said, I changed it so that the, the beginning chain counts it as a stitch. The only time it doesn't is on this very first round and I'll explain why. You're just chaining one and you're pulling it tight. That chain one actually doesn't end up looking like a stitch. Um, it just gives you a little bit of height because you're starting with nothing. How many have I done? Not enough, I don't think. It's I've done size hook are you using? So I'm using, I ended up using a an, an S hook, a three seven, which is a three seven five in the clover. I started with a G hook and I got slightly over gauge, just a hair over. It would have been fine. But I went down one hook size and tried it. And I'm a, just a hair under gauge, but I liked my square better. It was, it was the right amount of tightness for me. So I decided to stick with that and make a slightly larger size. Instead of, because I was going to be right, you know, I did all the measurements. I was going to be, it was going to be a fitted, not overly fitted, but I wanted a little bit more ease in my top. So I ended up sticking with this size. You may decide after you do your first round, you may decide you want to stick with it. You may want to switch higher or lower depending on, on how it works out. But I'll show you how to measure. I think after round four, we'll be able to measure and you can tell. Now let me count my stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's eight. Eight single crochets. There's my family texting every time. So I'm going to tighten my magic ring so that I can pull on the tail. It tightens it up. Come around to the first single crochet and I'm going to slip stitch. So we right now we are doing round one, making eight single crochets into the ring slip stitching into the first single crochet and then it says to loosely chain one i crossed that out and i changed it to chain five i'm sorry somebody just texted me five chain three so i've got eight single crochets in a circle here i slip stitched into the very first of them to close up my circle and now i'm going to chain three this chain three is going to act as the first double crochet for round two. So I crossed out loosely chain one and I replaced that with chain three. And I'm going to count that chain three as a stitch and it counts as a double crochet. Three chains is the height, is about the height of a double crochet. Okay, now I'm going to read the rest of round two. And Bernie pointed this out when she first came on. She writes it, two double crochet, chain one in each stitch, fasten off. And you fasten off because we're going to change colors at that point, okay? You can read it, two double crochet. She does not mean to put, she means you're going to do two double crochets. Sometimes she writes the two in front and sometimes she writes the number after. She always means how many you're supposed to do. Um, when you look down to round three, she says double crochet three. She means put three double crochets into that space. So she's not consistent with where she puts the number. Um, so you can you can put it either way, but she does mean in round two, put two double crochets and a chain one in each stitch. Now this chain three counts as, I'm gonna zoom in on it, counts as my first double crochet. 
can get nice and close here. And I had slip stitched into the very first single crochet stitch. So I already have essentially one double crochet coming out of it. I'm gonna put a second double crochet into the same stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like. So both of those are coming out of the same place. And then I chain one. So one of them is a chain three, one of them is a double crochet, but they both count as a double crochet. Now I'm gonna move to my next single and I have a chain one here, which gives us a little space. I think up until now on our previous granny square projects, we have not had any chains between our clusters. So this one, uh, so I'm putting a second one into the same space and finish with a chain one. She wants a chain one in between each of these little clusters. We're making a two double crochet cluster in each stitch. And then the third one. So when I come back around, I will have eight clusters of double crochet. So here's my first one. These two stitches are the first cluster, and then they have a little chain one space in between them. Here's my second, here's my third. One in the same stitch. Two, chain one. One, two, chain one, one, two, chain one, one, two, chain one. All right, so it looks like I want to just double check how many I've done. Pull my loop. So here's one cluster. I'm going to lay it down and point to them. Okay, so these two are one cluster. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have one more cluster to make. And the reason I stopped to count is after I make this one, it will look like you have one more stitch to go into, but you don't. Chain one. So I just counted, so I know that is my eighth cluster, but it looks like there's one more stitch. That is actually the stitch we did a chain three out of, but because we kind of came out of the stitch, it leaves kind of the back part of the stitch open. That is not a stitch, okay? So you've got your eight clusters and we're gonna finish it with a slip stitch in the top of the chain three. Now this morning, the morning group, we talked about this. You can actually, and here's how you do that. Here's one, two, three. You can go into the top of that chain and slip stitch it to close, okay? And you've got a nice going around here. Sometimes getting into, I'm gonna pull that out, Sometimes getting into the top of the chain three is a little tight and kind of a pain in the tuchus. So what you can do instead, and the only reason you can do it this way is because I happen to know that our next round, we will be making stitches into the chain spaces, not the tops of the stitches. So I could skip the top of the chain three and go underneath the top of the first actual double crochet to slip stitch, and it makes a nice smooth top. But what you end up with is- What? No, I think she's sleeping. Amy, Amy, I'm gonna mute you real quick. Thanks. Um, you end up losing a top of a stitch by doing that, but I don't need the tops of the stitches for the next round. I just need the chain one spaces. If your next round, you needed to go into the top of each stitch, you would make sure that you joined in the top of the chain three. So it's completely up to you which one you do. 
join in the top of the chain three or in the top of the, the double crochet that comes right after it. it either one, it, it doesn't matter. All right, as long as you've got eight clusters of two double crochets with chain ones in between. And then here's how I finish off my round because I don't like to weave in ends. I am going to slip stitch into the next couple of stitches. You could even slip stitch into the chain one space. And what this is doing is locking my yarn in like I was weaving it away. But because I'm making a slip stitch, it doesn't add much um, bulk to it. I've got to have my scissors on. And I can trim the yarn. I don't have to leave very much of a tail because now I don't have to weave it away. And then just pull that out and your yarn is locked in. So when I come around and do the next, I'll show you how I go over this tail and how to trim it. But let's see about that one here. I could show you real quick. So this one, nope, I didn't do it on that one. Sometimes I forget. And then I'm like, crap, now I have to weave it. Okay, this one I did it on. So I did my center. And then when I did my second row, I went over. So this is, I slip stitched it and then just laid it across and went over my ends. So it is really locked away. And then I can trim it and I have no end to weave away, okay? So I really like to work over my ends because if you look at how many squares and how many times you're changing colors, it is a lot of freaking ends to weave away. <laughs> so I highly recommend um, going over your ends, at least practicing that, um, that technique. Even if you forget, sometimes it'll, it'll help. All right, so now I've got the end of round one and one round one and two in every square square a or b which we'll talk about after this one the first two rounds the single and the second round are always going to be the same color okay so unless you choose to change it by the way just so you know you can change that if you want to but as the pattern is written the rounds of singles and the rounds of two double crochet clusters are done in the same color and then you switch colors. All right, so now I'm gonna pull out another color. And going back to the pattern, um, let's see. After round two, she says, attach a new contrast color to any chain space. She says, loosely chain one. I changed that to chain three, because our next round also has double crochets. So I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to start in any chain one space. So you can pick any chain one space. I recommend you don't pick the same chain one space right where we finished, because if you're going to do this kind of slip stitch over your ends technique, if you did it all in the same place for every round, that one side would eventually get a little bit of a bulge in it. So I usually just turn it and go to the opposite side. And I'm gonna go into the chain one space, grab my working yarn and pull it all the way through for a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna chain three. and I'm ready to start. If I'm actually thinking about it, I'm gonna take that tail of my new color and I'm gonna lay it over or next to the stitches I'm gonna be crocheting over and start to weave away or at least tuck it in as I work. Half the time I forget to do that and I'm angry about it. So I'm glad I remembered this time. Okay, round three, double crochet three, chain one into each chain space. Well, this chain three counts as a double crochet, so I need to add two more. Yarn over, go back into the same space, and I'm gonna work over my tail at the same time. One, so now I've got two doubles, yarn over. Okay. 
So now I've got three double crochets. The first one happens to be a chain three in that chain space and then chain one. Are there any questions before I keep going? Okay. Feel free to, if you've got a question, don't hesitate. I'm gonna keep kind of going over this end for well, maybe two more clusters. All right, three in this next space. One. Two. Three. And if you're going over your tail like that, sometimes I'm gonna turn it over. Sometimes it'll roll around back here. But as you can see, I'm tuck I'm basically kind of weaving it in. I'm tucking it in. The end of it is a slip, is part of a slip stitch. It's almost like a knot. It's really not going to go anywhere. What I'm really just doing is just hiding the end and tucking it away so I don't have to weave it away later. So remember to finish this cluster with a chain one. And I think I can tuck it away under one more cluster. And I'm going into the chain one space from the previous round. But sometimes it'll pull itself up and I'll show you how to straighten that out. I'm glad it did that. And two and three, chain one. All you have to do is take that end and pull it back around to the back. If it starts to pop around to the front and just get it secured back there. So that's enough. I'm gonna just drop it and I can cut it away after I finish this round. So I'm gonna be coming up across this tail, which I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of lay it across and tuck it in. And I'm doing this all the way around. Just don't forget the chain one, oops, um, in between the three double crochet clusters. Chain one. Touch that one. Mm -hmm. Two. Three. Chain one. You know, it's probably enough because I did get slip stitched across, but I tucked the end in. Two, three, chain one, chain one, and I should have looks like one more here which should give me a total of eight. I'm just gonna do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My last one will make eight, perfect. <clears throat> Making sure that you've completed this round right will make the next round go, uh, go well. Chain one, and then again, slip stitch to join. This one is also the same. You can go into the top of the chain three which is right here and sometimes a little tricky to get into, or you can go over one and go underneath the top of the first actual double crochet, slip stitch to join, and then I'm gonna slip stitch a couple stitches over because I'm gonna be changing colors again. And I usually do like three or four stitches. Cut up and pull it through. Okay. You'll find that it starts to make a little dish like this. Totally fine. Absolutely normal. This next round is going to turn our circle into a square, and that's what's going to pull it out so it lays flat. Okay. So don't worry if your um, little discs are starting to curl up. Uh, at this stage, all of mine are. Um, and the next round, we'll straighten that out and make them flat. Okay, so now we're gonna use, for the next two rounds, your main color. <clears throat> okay. 
you know what I didn't think about ahead of time is and we'll see I'm hoping my main color you can see it because it's so dark if it's hard to see the stitch I'll switch to a lighter color for this one all right going back to my pattern um, after round three it says to join main color to any side chain space and the reason she's saying side chain space is because some of these chain spaces are going to become corners and some are going to become sides. Like this one is a corner, but this one is a side. This one is a corner, this one is a side. So you're gonna, the first one you're gonna be creating is a side space, which is why she calls it a side. Right now you have a circle and you don't know which one is which. Um, she says chain, loosely chain one, I'm going to chain three. So I'm going to move to a different location than this. Well, you know, here's good. I'm going to join. I have a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to slip stitch, which is just pulling through without any yarn over. I'm going to bring my tail across so I can work over it. And I'm going to chain three. All right, round four. You are going to do three double crochets and a chain one in the same space. We already have one. Our chain three acts as one. We're going to do two more. So this is like we did on the last round. And a chain one. So what we've done there is created a little as a side space. Now in the next space, we're going to do double crochet three, a chain two, double crochet three, and a chain one, all in the next space. And what that does is creates a corner. So I've got, I ended with a chain one here. I'm gonna put three double crochets, one, two, three, I'm gonna chain two, which is the actual corner point is that chain two. And sometimes you gotta move these stitches over a little bit to make room for three more double crochets. One, two, three. All right, so here I've made, and then you end with a chain one so that I can go on to the next space. So what we have here, open that up. We did three doubles here. The first one is a chain three. We did a chain one to make the space. And then we put, open it up for a little bit. Three double crochets. We chained two which gives us a, a good bending part, which is why we chain two. And then we did three more doubles all in that same space. And then we ended with a chain one. Now we're gonna go into the next one and make another side. When this round is done, you will have four corners and four sides. So you'll alternate making a corner, making a side. You will finish by making a corner. So one, two, three, chain two. And like I said, you can slide those stitches over a little bit to give yourself a little more room. Three more doubles in the same space. One, two, three, chain one. I'm gonna lay this tail down and go over it. So now I've made another corner, which I didn't want to do. <laughs> that was supposed to be a side space. So let's pull that out, pull out those three doubles and one of the chains. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. Okay, now it's time to make another corner. One. Two. Come back with a turn. Three. 
between two. Now I can slide these over to give myself a little more room. And then one, two, three, chain one. So now I've got, see it's starting to take, literally take shape. We started here with a side space, a corner, a side, a corner. And I'll we'll finish up the round. Because after this round, we will not be changing colors. Three, chain one, another corner. One, two, three, chain two. One, two, three, chain one, another side. And then after this round, we're gonna check, I'll show you how to check gauge. Chain one, and one last, oops, one last corner. And Two, three, chain two, and one, two, three, chain one. Now this one, for the end of this round, our next round after this is not using the chain spaces, it's using the actual stitches. So this one, you do have to finish the round in the top of the chain three. So one, two, three. So I do need to go into the chain three, slip stitch to join, and then you're gonna chain two. Because our next round is half double crochets. But I'm going to leave it there for a second before I do that round and show you how to check gauge. On the first page, and I'm just kind of patting it down. On the first page, she gives you a couple of ways to check gauge. Um, and she color codes them. There's the, the black line, the yellow line, and the white line. The black line is where we're at now. Okay. So across not a, not on a diagonal, but just straight across. This should measure, I believe it's eight centimeters, eight centimeters. Let me darken this just a little. So, so I come in almost right at eight centimeters. It's actually just a hair under. When I did it in the four millimeter hook, I came in just over eight centimeters. Actually, I have that square, I can show you. You can see the difference. Oops, let me zoom out. Okay. So overall, it does look a little bit bigger, but it also just looked looser and I didn't like it. So I could have made either one of them work, but I liked this square better. If this had, you know, if this had been wildly off gauge and this one was right, I would have lived with it. But since this one was just a hair under and this one was just a hair over, it's just over. I decided I'd rather do the square that I liked better, the fit that I would like better. So that's why I decided with that, okay? Um, it's, up to, it's up to you which way you wanna go. If you're not sure, bring your square in, because I think everybody here is local, or send me a picture or something and we can decide what to do. Um, but I think uh, you wanna be as close to eight centimeters as you can. And this, see, this is another one where I did the, the chain one and it looks like it's a cluster of like four there. It makes me crazy. I might have to redo that. 
Okay, so that's the end of round four and that's where I checked gauge. So I'm gonna show you how to do, you might be right on gauge and you can keep going, but you might, I'll show you how to do the next round, but you may change your mind about what hook size you wanna use. And you can measure it both ways, but just make sure you're going straight through the middle there, okay? You can also do this finishing round and you can do another gauge, which includes a diagonal to really see how close you are to the gauge for the pattern. All right, so I'm gonna finish up with the next round here and then we'll, we can answer some questions about gauge too. Round, we're on round five, we are not changing colors and we chained two because our next round is all half double crochet stitches. Okay, so what she wants you to do, and that my slip knot, my slip stitch was very loose. I'm gonna tighten that up. So I'm slip stitching into the top of the chain three from the round below. And then I chain two, which is acting as my first double crochet coming out of that stitch, okay? Now you're gonna go into you're gonna do a half double crochet in the top of this stitch and this stitch, okay? Remember when you're doing, when you're working in the round like this and you're not turning it over, working back and forth, and you're always staying on the right side, the top, let me put something white here. The top of the stitch, If you're, no, if you're not sure which one is the top of the stitch, if you look at the post of the stitch right here, the top of the stitch is always gonna be slightly to the right. Okay, so this is the top of the middle double crochet. Whoop. Let me get something that's not gonna catch. Okay, so there's the top of the middle double crochet. Here's the top of the third double crochet. And you can see it is just slightly to the right of it. If I was working back and forth, I'm gonna leave it in the same place. You can see it is slightly to the left. And that is a hard and fast rule. Um, no matter what you're doing, if you're working in a, in a circular, always staying on the right side, the top of the stitch is always gonna be slightly to the right. Depending if you're a right-handed or left-handed crocheter is how, how far over. Some people slant it a little bit more just depending on how they pull their stitches, okay? And I show you that because when it comes to this next part, you do need to know where the top of the stitch is. So I've done one half double crochet with my chain two. I'm gonna do another half double crochet in the next one. And she wants you to do half double crochets, which is a yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. No chaining in between, going into the next one. Pull through. You are also gonna make one, it's really hard to make one into the chain of a chain space. So a chain without a post, just make it into the chain space. Okay, because that is part of your stitch count. Now the top of the next stitch is probably tucked right underneath here. You kind of have to move your stitch over because the top of the next stitch is right here. So if this one in the chain space covers it, just slide it over a little bit. So a half double in here. And then the top of the next one. And I'm working towards a corner here. Okay, so I did the top of this one, this one, and this one. So the three that make up a corner. And now I'm gonna put three half doubles into my corner space, that chain two corner space. We gotta make a new corner. So into the chain space, three, 
half doubles. One, two, three, chain two. And this is not a typo. She tells you in the pattern, do one half double crochet. But here's why. Because typically you would do three doubles, a chain two, I'm sorry, three half doubles, a chain two. Let me make sure I'm reading it right. Hold on. Two half doubles, a chain two. I knew that something seemed wrong. All right. Two half doubles, a chain two. And then one half double. That is not a typo. At first I thought it was, but it's consistent throughout. Here's why. This is your last round of the granny. So when we go to join them, we will be joining uh, on this round. If we were to put another half double right there, the next half double for the next stitch actually leans into that corner space. All right, if we were to put another one there and then one here, it would be exceptionally bulky in the corners and we want those to be flexible. So she eliminates one of the half doubles and just does one half double after the chain two. And then you go into the top of the next stitch and the next stitch. Let me just work a couple and then I'll show it to you. And the next stitch. And what that does is still gives the appearance of a corner because this one really kind of leans in towards the corner without creating any extra bulk in the corner, okay? So that is not a typo. When you get to the corner, you make two half, oops, sorry, two half doubles, a chain two, and then one half double. And then you go back to making one half double in each stitch and chain space all the way across. I'm gonna work across to this one and then I'm gonna show you how to count because what you wanna have at the end of this is all the way around 56, 56? Yes, 56 half double crochets, which is 14 on each side. So I'm gonna, we've only come halfway up this side. So I wanna complete one whole side to show you, <clears throat> show you how to count. All right, so I did the three. I'm gonna go into the chain space into the top of the next one. Top of the next one. Top of the next one. Chain space. Top of the next one, which is really, here's a good example. It's really kind of into the chain space. One, two, Three, and here I am back at a chain two corner space. So let me make the one, two, chain two, and one more. Okay, I'm gonna pull up a big loop so I can show you how to count. Okay. So what I wanna do is I wanna count from the, the first, you just have to make sure you're stopping in the same part. I'm gonna skip the corner. So here's the two and the one that are part of the corner space. I'm gonna start counting right here with the first one of this side, okay? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and don't count the chain two, 14. So from the first half double through a complete corner should be 14 stitches. The chain two spaces do not count as stitches. So when all said and done all the way around, you'll have 56 half double crochets and four chain two spaces. And that is the same for both square A and B. Both square A and B, even though they're uh, constructed differently, they still end up with 56 half double crochets and four chain two spaces. 
right? So when you make your first side like this, double check, and this will give you an idea that you're, you're catching all of your stitches. If you miss one, ultimately when it comes time to join them, we'll fudge it, it's not a big deal. But what you don't wanna do is, is routinely be missing several all the way around because it will change the overall size of your, um, your square and will make joining harder. Okay, so I did the first half double, I mean the, the last half double in the corner space and now I'm gonna start a new side. One. Two, three, end of the chain space. And I, I, did, I do say these words out loud while I'm working on it because it helps me get into the routine. And if I get across to the three and there's not a chain space, I know I've done something wrong. Two, I think most knitters and crocheters talk to themselves anyway. Two, three chain space. Two, three, and back to a corner. Two half doubles in the corner space. Chain two, and then one more half double for the other side of the corner. And then you might have to slide that over a little bit so you can see the top of your next stitch right there. Chain space. And Space. Back to a corner, my last corner. One, two, chain two, one more. Get over so I can see my stitch. And one, two, three, and chain space. And then you can slip stitch into the top of the chain two. So here's the first chain is right here. The second chain. Ideally, you would come up underneath. I find the going into the tops of the chains because I tend to pull my chains a little tight. You would go, come underneath the top two loops like this. Try to catch two loops. If they're not the top two loops, ultimately it's not that big of a deal. Just make sure you're in the right space. Slip stitch. Tighten that up. And then I'm going to slip stitch a couple over. And this square is done. I'm going to show you how to do another good little gauge check here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one, this is the yellow measurement. It should read. Now that we've done this round, and if it's, you know, if you've really pulled it and it's out of whack, just kind of put it back into whack. That's the official term, put it back into whack. Okay. And I should be at nine and a half centimeters and I am right there. You can also check the diagonal, which is her white line, and this should be between 12 and 12 and a half centimeters. And I am 
just shy of 12. The only thing that tells us, and I, which I expected because I was slightly under gauge with this hook, this has to do with the width of your stitches. And this one also deals with the height of your stitches. And not everybody's width and height are proportional. I mean, they don't, you know, it's like having um, in knit stitches, you have knit gauge and you, you have stitch gauge and row gauge. This is the same kind of thing. If this was really out of whack, then we should talk. If you are more than like a full centimeter, if everything else measures up correctly, but your diagonal is really out of whack, excuse me, then, then let me know and we'll talk about how to make any sort of adjustments because your overall square may not uh, work up the way that you're anticipating, which just may mean that your stitch height is a little bit different and there are ways to adjust for that if you need to. Yep. There's the rest of my family texting three for three tonight. You guys are so lucky. We don't usually get everybody texting. All right. So that is square A. Are there any questions about how I adjusted the pattern? I hope that wasn't confusing. The morning group seemed to think that it did make sense. And overall, like the way that it looked. I just think that all the clusters look more even that way. Um, again, you don't have to do it that way, but this is what made the most sense to me. You can absolutely follow the pattern 100% because it will still work. So instead of loosely chaining one, you chained three and made it a half and double. Made, and made it count double. as a double, yes. Okay. And at the very last round, I chained two and I counted it as a half double. Okay. The only time I chained and I didn't count it as a stitch is the very first chain when you make, after you make your magic ring or you make your loop. You make your circle and you chain one. Because mm -hmm. it's such a small stitch, it just gets buried under the single crochets. It doesn't stand out. So okay. that one stays fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is square A. All right. Square B is very similar, except that all of square B starts with your main color. So what I liked about this, and as, as I was starting to look through everybody's projects on Ravelry, I started to really pay attention. What it does is it disperses this main color differently, which I really liked. If you don't like it, you can do all of your squares as square A, okay? Or you can do, uh, make all of these contrasting colors in square B. Square B, um, you, you make the square part of it on round three instead of round four. So it's a little bit different construction overall. I should have had two of the same color so you could see, but I didn't do that. Um, so they are constructed a little differently, but as you can see, they ultimately end up with 56 half double crochets and four chain two spaces in the corners, okay? So let me just walk you through square B. Um, and you can, if, you're, if you're changing the pattern, I'll give you the wording um, to do it in. So you're gonna start with your main color. You're either going to do a chain four ring or you're gonna start with a magic ring. You're gonna, chain one and into that ring, you're gonna make eight single crochets. You're gonna slip stitch to join into the first single crochet. Instead of loosely chaining one, you'll chain three. Both square A and square B, the first round and the second round are the same color. So you're gonna do those two rounds, we'll go on to round two. In square B, it is the main color for both um, the first round and the second round, okay? On square A, you can choose any contrasting color to do it that way. Round two is the same, it's exactly the same as square A. You're gonna put two double crochets and a chain one into each stitch all the way around. The first, the chain three that you made counts as a double crochet. 
So you'll chain three, you'll put one more double crochet in the same stitch, you'll chain one, then you'll move on to the next stitch and put two double crochets and a chain one. So you'll end up with eight clusters or a total of 16 double crochets. That's when you'll fasten off, like we, just like we did, and you're gonna change to a contrasting color. You are going to um, join your color in any chain, uh, chain one space. So you'll have a slip stitch on your hook, slip knot on your hook, excuse me. You'll slip stitch into a chain space and you are gonna chain three. So here's where the square differs. This round three, you're gonna, you're gonna square up your corners. We're not gonna do another circle round. We're gonna do, we're gonna square it off. So you're going to start with two more double crochets in the same space. So you did, your chain three was, hold on one second, two double crochets in the same space. I'm sorry, one more double crochet in the same space as your chain three, because these are still two double crochet clusters. And then that's your first side. Then you're gonna make a corner with two double crochets, a chain two and two double crochets, then chain one and make your next side, which is my darker blue here. So two double crochets and a chain one, and I'm back to making a new corner two double crochets, a chain two, two double crochets, uh, end with a chain one, two double crochets, chain one, make your last corner, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, chain one, slip stitch. This one, we're gonna be working the next round into chain spaces, so you can either go into the top of the chain three or into the top of the next double crochet, it's up to you, whatever you find easier but we don't need the stitch in this one. Um, the next round will be in spaces. So if we lose a stitch, it's not a big deal. Or the, I should say the top of the stitch. We didn't actually lose a stitch. You're going to fasten off your color and join a new color. And you are going to start with a slip knot. You're going to start in any corner space. and you are going to chain three. And in this one you're going to do, so here's how it's different. In the first one we did, we had three double crochets. This one, it only has two, whoops, sorry. So um, start with a chain three, make a second double crochet, chain two, make two more double crochets and a chain one. So all just like the previous round, go all the way around. Okay. And then round five, you're gonna fasten off, you go back to your main color. And round five is exactly the same as the previous round five. You're gonna join your main color in any corner space though on this one. You know, in the previous one, we were already attached. So we didn't have to go to a corner space. We just chained two up and moved across. This one, you're gonna join in a corner space. Anytime you're starting a new round, it is always easier to start into a, a, a space of some kind. It's just easier overall. Hold on, the, the rest of this part is on a different page. <laughs> there we go, okay. Um, so you're gonna do a slip stitch to join in a corner and chain two, make a second half double crochet, chain two, make one more half double crochet, and then do a half double crochet in each stitch. This time it'll be the top of this, the top of this, and then the chain space the top of this double, the top of this double, and then the chain space. So instead of one, two, three double, it's one, two double. And I'll give you my tips for that too. And you'll work all the way around that way, ending up again with, because we did um, this one only has one side and the corners. This has two sides and a corner. So it still ends up with the same number of stitches, 56. 
across. So it's just a different look to the green. Here's what I recommend. What I found in making these is trying, it's nice to get into a groove and let me stop sharing here for a second. Get into a groove as to, you know, what to do each round because then it's easy to remember and it becomes a little rote because you're making a lot of these. I suggest assembly lining it. Unless you find that boring, but this is what this is what worked for me. So I looked at my pattern. I decided to do based on my sizing and I measured, you know, I measured across through the bust. I also, I want mine to come down a little longer and I have a little bit more hip. So I want to make sure that it was going to fit through the hip as well. So that's why I'm going for, a, I'd rather have it slightly oversized here so that it will come down because I'm past my crop top days. <laughs> They're way in the back. <laughs> way long ago I had those. So I did my measurements. And again, her schematic is done in centimeters. Um, and figured out that the extra large was gonna was gonna fit for me. Okay. So based on that, square A, I have to make 67, and square B, I have to make 62. It's a lot of squares. <laughs> and going back and forth between the different rounds, it's easier to make mistakes. So what I decided to do, if I had 67 squares to make, and I am looking at uh, square A, and I have six contrasting colors that I want to use. That's somewhere between six and seven, um, starting with the centers. I wanted to have like an even distribution of my colors, starting with the center. So I decided to make six or seven, I started with six of each of my center. So round one and one round two, because those are both the same color. So I made a whole bunch, I made six or seven in each of my colors, because that was really easy to remember how to do. <laughs> I could just, just becomes mindless. And then stick them in a bag. I marked my baggy square A's and just went from there. So some of them I had started to move on because I wanted to um, work through the pattern a little bit. And then I could pick out my centers and then I could go on and do the next round and I could switch up the colors. So for all the ones that start gold, and I have the rest of them here, I haven't started yet. I switched up my colors. So sometimes I went gold and then orange, gold and then light blue. I'll do gold and darker blue just so that I had an even distribution. If there's one color you only want to highlight a little bit, so don't use that one as much. Maybe only do three or four centers of that and only use it as a round, you know, a few times. You can totally decide how to do that, okay? Um, up to you. But I found assembly lining it that way was the easiest way to go. And then once all your square A's are done, move on to your square B's. In which case you're using a lot of your main color then too. Um, so between now and a month from now, make a dent in square A and square B. You absolutely don't have to have them finished, but make a dent in it because what I do want to do next month is I'm going to cover how to make the half granny and the three quarter granny, but I also want to start um, talking about the layout and the sizing as, as far as the, how you're, you know, gauge is great. And then once you start to actually put it together, then reality hits <laughs> and we can, we can talk about how to lay it out. And if you don't want the sleeves quite as long, maybe you don't need quite as many squares. So you don't have to do all of the squares, but have a good portion of them done. So we can at least lay out like a front and a sleeve to get an idea of what your overall size is really going to be. And then we can adjust from that. Um, and then we can talk and we'll, we'll talk about um, the next steps there, but that, that's how we're going to, we're going to handle it is make a dent in these squares. Maybe try to have at least half done. If you're feeling ambitious, get them all done, but you might not end up needing them all. So if you want to leave a few off, that's fine too. Okay. Does that make sense? You still in Bernie? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I didn't I didn't scare you off. Oh good. No, no. I I'm just I I can't 
understand the sizes. Okay. So who are, you're making this for who? My granddaughter. Okay. She's 24. Do you have an, like what, what overall, do you have an overall like bus size for her? Yeah, about a 30, between a 35 and a 36. Okay. So look, we're going to go 36. Which I would say puts you at, that is about all the way around. That is roughly like 92 centimeters. I would say maybe do, oh, so much math. So, you know, we had, it's so funny. I have to tell you this. So we had our intern, Laura here. Um, she was doing her senior project and today was her last day and <laughs> she was working on a hat. She's like, oh my God, there's so much math. And Audrey and I are like, you're one of us. Because <laughs> we say that all the time. <laughs> Except that she's young enough, she remembers her math. And how, like she pulled up some formula and just whipped it right out. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's not fun. Okay, 62 times two. So I feel like, is she on the slimmer side though, overall? um yes yeah okay so you might want to do depending on your gauge you might want to aim for the medium uh, yeah on yours okay so when it comes to how many squares aim aim for the medium size so that's 58 squares yeah it's still a lot of squares i mean it jumps from like 33 to 58 yes but you may not need all of those because I think right. you can take some out of the arm. So shoot for like 50-ish squares. Okay. All right. And then we'll be able to kind of lay out and see um, what works for her. What, I mean, what works for you then? Because then we'll have an overall idea of really how big is it? Because, you know, sometimes you crochet angry and it's tighter and sometimes... <laughs> sometimes right. crochet after a glass of wine and it's a little looser you know <laughs> so once you put them all together we'll get the real the real story so okay yeah that was my own question okay, if, you could, if you could email me your your um, yes. note yes please i'm happy to do that i'll just email it to everybody <laughs> okay so you'll have it <laughs> um and then, and then you'll just see how I did it that way. So that'll be fine. I'm going to do my erase mark. So it won't probably be till tomorrow, but I will send it to you. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Would you, would you base your size on your bust and then alter the length as needed? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's exactly okay. what I would do. You're welcome, Amy. <laughs> um, I would base it. So I always base it on the widest part but mm -hmm. I would start with the bust because you could we could also if you wanted to make this a line if you if you needed to and I might need to I might need to add a little room in the hips but you could do that too by adding squares um, but aim it for but start with your bust measurement we can absolutely adjust that arm and we can adjust the length we can take out a row of squares or we could add a row of half squares i'm thinking the same thing for you too amy yes and then she's saying i'm thinking 67 i i would say the same thing because you and i are I square in the bust uh -huh. and then if we want to adjust the length of it we can work from there we can add depending on we'll figure out how many around the arm we need because we can add half squares to the bottom if we want to add a little more length or another full square if we want to add a little more length. So there's lots of ways to adapt this. The 67 is the biggest one? Um, yes. Because let's see, if I look at the 62, it it's a 24 inch bust, which is 48 inches around. That's a, that's, it's, it's fairly roomy. The next one is too small, but that might feel like, it. yeah, I don't think I need it that roomy. I don't think there's no shaping, right? There's really no so shaping. Just, we can adjust a little bit 
Okay. But, but in between sides as, much, with, as yeah. much as you can adjust with squares, you know, <laughs> you, you can take out a square, you can replace a square with a half square, particularly, you know, under here, if we needed to take it in a little, it is yeah. possible okay. to not have a whole square joining. You could have a half square joining because okay. under the arm, who cares? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll aim figure for, it yeah, out. Aim for that we... size. Okay. And then you'll know your real gauge too at that point. Yeah. And like I said, make the square, you know, depending on how your, your gauge works out, but pick the fabric that you like the best. Okay. You know, if it's, if it looks really loose, you're not going to be happy with it. If it looks right. too tight, it's going to be stiff. Don't go with that either. Okay. So ultimately it's kind of a combination of what's in the right range and what has the best look. And okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Got it. Okay. What size hook did you use again? I ended up with an F hook, which is a 3.75, which apparently you can only get in the clover hooks. I know. It's not available in the prim. I'm sorry, Ingrid. I went to go order it. I'm like, they don't make it in the prim because they really only do whole and sometimes half sizes of millimeters. So I ordered more if you, if you end up ultimately needing that size. I have the clover ones. Yeah. Yeah, because I started out with a four point five. Yeah. Was that really big? Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Okay. So you could go down to a four. Okay. Or even a three and a half and see how it looks. So, you know, once you know what your gauge is, you can always call me too, Bernie, once you figure out what size square. Uh-huh you actually get, and then maybe we end up making a slightly larger top or, or if you like the looser look, which is fine, we, maybe we make a, a we, we aim for the smaller top. So you can play that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop recording.